So here we are at the 11th Multicore World with one friend, a long-term friend of Multicore World, Dr. Jim Eng from the Pacific Northwest National Labs. Welcome back. Thank you, Dick. Well, it's great to be here. Why? Uh, <laughs> again, because you, you bring together a very interesting uh, collection of leaders from around the world, and we have very, very useful, interesting discussions. But still coming all over the world to little New Zealand is a little bit more than just a touristic tour. Well, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm also excited about uh, new, new developments, and I wanted to share that excitement with you and this community. This is about the CHIPS Act and the potential of open source more things around hardware and software. That is correct. Is there any yeah. link that we can, I mean, we cannot compare the resources and the scale of the United States and the government and the countries versus a small economy as New Zealand, but as we discussed more than once, innovation happens in the fringes, and you cannot be more in the fringe than in New Zealand. <laughs> so where do you see that could be synergies, particularly in agriculture empowered by supercomputing, which is a field that I'm trying to push? An area that you're very interested in. And, and so... Uh, you know, one of the goals of the United States CHIPS Act is to uh, help de democratize innovation, which then means uh, innovation in microelectronics and semiconductors um, is not only is, is not a game that's only played by the largest companies, right, or the largest universities. Um, the the opportunity and and really the impact of the CHIPS Act. Is uh, is really going to be felt by providing a uh, uh, a hardware prototyping infrastructure that can support advances in uh, R and D and materials in new processes, and uh, my interest is in uh, new concepts for advanced computing, um, say uh, domain specialized hardware accelerators, and the reason why that's important is. For certain kinds of uh, challenge problems, uh, I, I spoke about energy efficient computing performance, but there are others like uh, uh, improvements in cybersecurity performance, where the solution won't just be obtained by advances in software. You actually need a co-design approach where advances in both new hardware designs and concepts, as well as the supporting software are required to make progress. That's probably your first time in Christchurch. This is my first time in Christchurch. But you are probably uh, therefore not aware that there is a microelectronics cluster uh, around the University of Canterbury and certain companies that also export from here to the world. I Excellent. mean, <clears throat> And you mentioned that you are a fan of motorbikes, so that's an example of ingenuity about John Britton or Bert Monroe. But yeah. similar things happen in the world of microelectronics. And there are a number of companies here that have been trading for years and working globally. But how would you uh, uh, consider that as a cluster that could link to the next generation of co-design hardware software? So, um, uh, again, uh, at Pacific Northwest National Lab, we're trying to take our capabilities and uh, tools for hardware design, for system software support, and, and making them open source. So they... They can then form the basis of uh, adoption, collaboration. Um, hopefully, that that's at least an entry point, and maybe uh, a, a philosophy that's uh, uh, close to your heart with the, your history of open parallel, and 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 that what leads to a multi-core world. Thank you very much, and welcome again. Hope to see you again next year. You're very welcome. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you very much. Okay.